So, here we have the 2018 MacBook Air. I was really looking forward to the refresh of the Mac Mini. I've done a performance review of that and I'll, I'll leave a link to it down below. The MacBook Air, not so much. Now it could be that I'm not the right type of user for this device anyway, but they've upgraded it with a retina screen, which is great. It's also got your USB-C or Thunderbolt ports on there. But if you look at the processor that they've put in this, the previous generation was a, a U-series 15 watt processor. What they've put in here is a step down in the generation. It's a, it's a Y-series 7 watt processor. So I'm not sure this is gonna be very quick. So let's have a look at the performance of it and we'll go through and just see what it looks like. Also I have to say, this is the 12 inch MacBook and this is the 13 inch Air. Why do both of these exist? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with that, but hey, who knows what's gonna to happen to the MacBook. Anyway, let's go look at the performance and we'll see what we can make it do. Okay, here we go. I've managed to get it all set up now. So let's have a look and see which machine it is. There we go, this is the 2018 13-inch MacBook Air. It's got a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Core i5 in it, so that's two cores but four threads. It's got eight gig of RAM in this and a 256 gig SSD. Let's have a look at some of the benchmarks that I, I've run. Now, if we open this up, we'll be able to compare it to some of my other kits. So it's no great surprise to see it down the bottom here, considering the processor that's in this unit. The multi-core on Geekbench 4, for example, is coming out at 7,832. The, these have all been run two or three times, so they're average scores. So you can see it's quite significantly below even, for example, the Surface Book 2. Now, the one thing I will say is the performance feels better than I expected. Apple have a way of, of making units that sometimes feel a bit more than the sum of their parts and that seems to me what they've managed to do here with the Air as well. I've been using it for a little while and like I say it does feel a lot quicker and a lot more fluid than perhaps the benchmarks would give away. To give you an idea by the way on the those Geekbench scores for example and also the Cinebench scores what I've got here are the Geekbench scores from a 10 and a half inch iPad Pro. And as you can see, the multi-core is actually higher than this MacBook Air, which is a bit of a surprise, isn't it? I mean, just looking at those multi-core scores, for example, even the iPhone 8 is showing a higher performance in this Air. I'm not sure what that says about the Air or, or how powerful some of the iPad devices are and phones that are coming through now. Let's have a look at the hard disk performance as well. Now, bear in mind, I am recording the screen currently with QuickTime and it does have some impact on the performance, but uh, let's see what it does. There you go. When I ran this previously, when I wasn't recording the screen, I was getting around a gigabyte per second write times and a, around two gigabytes per second read time. So it's still pretty impressive. Not as fast as the Mini and not certainly not as fast as my MacBook Pro or iMac Pro, but they are still very quick drives. And I suspect it's the speed of those drives that's helping the fluidity on the machine. Let's have a look at how well Office performs. So I've got Office 2019 on here. So let's, uh, well, in fact, Excel is already fired up there. Let's get Word fired up. I have to say, I've never found Office on the Mac that quick compared to the Windows version anyway. I have been using it, and it is entirely usable. Once you've got everything open, it's uh, it's fluid and it's a fast machine. I, I'm quite pleasantly surprised by that, to be honest. Let's get some more Windows open. We can have a look and see how it performs. Same with Excel. Let's open a few. There we go, we can see all the windows open there. So that, that little tool, by the way, that shows up the windows a bit like, you know, how Windows 10 does it, is, a, is an application called HyperDoc, and it, it's one of my favorites, it's really useful. But anyway, as you can see, it is fairly fluid, surprisingly so, in fact. So let's get these closed down. Now, it's performed so well, it made me wonder whether I could use virtualization on this, because I wasn't expecting to, to be honest. Looking at the specifications made me think, you know, it, it's way too underpowered for that. But I was quite, again, pleasantly surprised. I've put VMware Fusion on here with a Windows 10 virtual machine. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't set the world alight in terms of performance, but it's certainly usable. So let's get Windows 10 fired up and we can have a look and, and see what it's like. Before we fire this machine up, let's have a quick look at the resources that I've allocated to it. So at the moment, I've allocated all the available cores. Now it's showing four, even though there's only two in there because it's it's got the two cores, but with the hyper-threading allowing two threads per core. And I've got four gig of RAM allocated as well. So let's get the machine fired up. Now, the experience I've had with this is that once the machine's up and running, 
and you're logged in, it takes a little while for the machine to settle down in terms of um, the processor uh, being a bit flatlined. But once it's settled down, it's completely usable. So, so let's look at the times and I'll show you what the performance looks like. There we go. Let's get logged in and I'll show you what I mean about the processor. You can see up the top here at the iStat menus that the processor is currently uh, flatlining, but that's because I've got all of it allocated to this virtual machine. So what I found is I need to leave it a little while, not, not particularly too long, and it will settle down. And once it's settled down, it becomes a lot more usable. So let's fire up Task Manager and we'll be able to see when it's sorted itself out. you can see that it's settled right down. Now, the way to avoid that, of course, is actually not to shut the machine down or start it up, but actually just suspend the machine. And uh, it seems to get around that delay on the startup. So let's look at the general performance of this. So let's get some Office apps fired up. So let's start with Excel. There we go. Now, like I say, it's never going to be a, a speed demon in this, but the fact that it works at all, I think is quite impressive. Let's get Word fired up as well. And we can even run Visio. So how usable is it? Well, if I had to use that every day in that setup, I think I'd find it a bit frustrating to be honest. But if all you need is to be able to now and again run Windows for one specific app or, or you know, just to get access to one specific thing, I suspect it'd be completely workable. Personally, I think I'd find it a bit frustrating in terms of performance. Let's get those closed down. Now, to avoid that that startup lag, what I, what I would recommend is they actually suspend the machine. So for example, if I just close the machine like that, it'll suspend the virtual machine rather than shut it down and, and start it up again. There we go. So if we wanted to start that machine again, essentially it will just pick up from where, where it left off. And there we go. Anyway, let's get this machine shut down. So in general, I I found that the performance of this is is better than would be indicated by the benchmarks. The benchmarks seem to indicate that the machine is slow. I mean, it, it's it's benchmarking well below even the iPads, for example. But if you're just after a small light machine to do productivity type stuff on, you know, Word, Excel, Outlook, all that sort of good stuff, then I, I think this is a good machine to use. Could it be faster? Absolutely. But as with anything, there's a compromise between the size, battery life and all that good stuff and, and the, the outright performance. But I, I found this a lot better than I was expecting. I'm going to be using this machine in anger over the next few weeks as my new travel buddy, mainly because my 12 inch MacBook is a bit broken at the moment. I'm not quite sure what happened to that. But so this is going to replace that. Now, the performance is very similar to my MacBook because my MacBook's a 2017, but I think it's the i7 one. So I don't feel there's an awful lot of difference. So I'm struggling to differentiate this against the MacBook or the MacBook against the Air. Now, I suppose the main difference is the screen is slightly larger and the fact that it's got two Thunderbolt ports rather than just the one on the MacBook. I can't help feeling slightly disappointed with the upgrade to the Air. It's almost like they could have done a lot more with it. It's it's certainly not a, a speed machine, but you know if you just need some productivity on the road, perhaps it's good enough for that. 
So I'll report back once I've been using it for a little while. But my gut feel is that I am a bit disappointed in the upgrade. It doesn't seem to give me much more.